my name is Rachel Hunter and I'm 17 years old. I go to Solid Rock Youth and New Minus Baptist Church. So today I'm going to be talking about Acts chapter 2, um, which the main focus is about the Holy Spirit coming down and residing in the disciples. So verses 2 to 3 describe how it happened. So there were huge winds that filled up the room and tongues of fire came down and rested upon the upon the disciples. Reading about this now, I'm thinking, wow, that's really cool. But if I was there, that would be terrifying. I would have been out of there. It's so amazing how God shows this power that he has through this, this event. Like, it's pretty crazy. So, the fire coming down from heaven, which we know is the Holy Spirit, gave the disciples the ability to speak other languages that they didn't know before. In fact, it actually says that the people who were crowding around them could understand what they were saying in their own native languages. These people were from all over, so their native languages would have been different, and they all understood what the disciples were saying. It says that they were amazed and perplexed, and asking each other what it meant. And of course, as always, there were a few who criticized and claimed that the disciples had a bit too much wine to drink. Peter stood up and began explaining to the crowd what had happened, and using examples from the Old Testament, which they would have known because they were in Jerusalem for the Pentecost. He quoted prophecies made by Joel and David years prior to this event. The section from Joel speaks about this day where the Holy Spirit came down to reside on the disciples, although not all of this section happened at this time. The next part from David talks about Jesus' resurrection and defeating death. The way that David speaks in this passage, he spoke as if it was, it was himself coming back to life was confusing to the people, especially because David had already died and was dead for a long time. David was in fact talking about his descendant, Jesus, who would rise from the dead and go to be on the left hand of God. On this day, many people came to believe in Jesus and were baptized. It says that about 3,000 people became Christians that day. Acts 2 ends with saying the new believers were meeting together and holding church meetings and fellowship and were praising God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I do feel like it's important to point out that the first Christians didn't reject Judaism. They became, they became Christians because the teachings and resurrection of Jesus completed and fulfilled what they had already believed. At the very end, it says that the church continued to grow and more numbers were being added daily. I think it's very important that we see that this is our mission. It's to attract as many people into our community as possible and show them the love and compassion of God. So I am going to end in a little prayer and then you can be on your way. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Thank you. It's Easter. <laughs> it's the Easter season. I know it's pretty well done now, but there's still that hope, Lord. We know what you have done for us, Lord. Lord, I pray for the coronavirus and the essential workers and the sick and their family. Lord, this is a very difficult time. We need your guidance in times like these. We don't fully know what's going on in the world today and we need your help. Lord, I pray for our devotions as we begin our journey through the book of Acts and that you'll speak to us and teach us what we need to know through your word. Lord, be with us all in these tough times. We need this. <laughs> we need your help, Lord. In your name I pray.